Hello you, it's me. Today we're going to talk about The Box Man by Kobo Abe, which is a pen name of Kimifusa Abe, Japanese author who published this book in 1973. Recently this was added to the Penguin Modern Classics collection, so I requested an arc of this, uh, thinking it was a new book. Turns out it wasn't, and I'm just a Muppet. Anyway, he's an author, playwright, musician, and inventor. Seems like most of his writing is absurdism or surrealism, and uh, from reading his Wikipedia, I know, 10 out of 10 top tier research right there. He seems like a very strange and interesting guy. This is going to be a really short review, just a couple of thoughts on this. It's only about 120 pages long. This book is about people who abandon their life to follow a sort of romanticised idea of being a completely objective observer in society. They wear a box over their top half, uh, cutting a little hole out for their eyes with a little curtain to pull to one side, sticking everything, hanging everything they might need on the inside of the box. Boxmen are hated by most people to such a degree that most people's eyes will just pass completely over them without even registering that they were there at all. It's written in the format of a journal, uh, notes slash thoughts of a photographer who leaves his life to become a boxman. He walks us through selection of construction of a box, telling us about stories or cases of other people who may or may not have been him at some point in his life who left to become boxmen or events that led to them becoming boxmen. And then all the while we're following the story of the main character becoming increasingly obsessed with a female nurse who is in the care of a fake doctor, uh, who is also a boxman, but a fake boxman. Somebody who eroticizes it and completely, in the main character's opinion, misses the point of the lifestyle altogether. This book is thoroughly confusing. Besides the thoughts and the articles about other people, the main story shifts between the points of view of the box man, the fake box man, with the real one worrying that he's appropriating a lifestyle and that he's the fake one anyway. There's a death. Who dies? You're not really sure. And why? It's ambiguous. And it's ambiguous as to whether it's a murder, a suicide, an assisted suicide. I was drawing comparisons to Kafka while I was reading this. It's weird. It's that weird. It has a really similar melancholy vibe, but also feels kind of David Lynch. Could be a really early David Lynch experimental movie. It feels very experimental, this. There's an unreliable narrator, big time skips, a lot of contradictions that make this difficult to read. I had to pay 200% attention to every sentence, and it took me days to read this 120-page book. I think I would have enjoyed it more as an audiobook, but I think that would have robbed it of a lot of the deliberate ambiguity. It definitely would have made it easier for me to follow though with a couple of different voice actors. I can say though, uh, the plus point is that this book is beautifully written. There's a lot of really gorgeous descriptives, even making the scenes which are essentially smut really pretty. One passage I really liked. If you are one of those who have dreamed of, described in their thoughts even once, the anonymous city that exists for its nameless inhabitants, you should not be indifferent, because you are always exposed to the same dangers as them. That city where doors are open for anyone, where even among strangers you need not be on the defensive, where you can walk on your head or sleep by the roadside without being blamed, where you are free to sing if you're proud of your ability, and where, having done all that, you can mix with the nameless crowds whenever you wish. I think this book was trying to tell me something. It was trying to make some kind of societal commentary, or philosophical point, and I think that because the book was so difficult to follow, that went completely over my head. I don't know what this book was about, so I've come up with some ideas. Number one, homeless people hate the boxmen, so maybe it's about how patronising it is to romanticise a life on the street, and how actually toxic that is. About how insulting it is to have the privilege to give up your life when other people would fight to get where you are. Number two, the box man is a chrysalis. You take on this life, have your perception altered, and emerge as something else. Number three, how impossible it is to be truly objective while still being physically present in a situation, able to be looked upon while you look upon. I think there's a lot in here about the effect of observing versus being observed. Number four, hiding from society and segregating yourself is probably more out of 
self-hatred for most people than freedom and control, no matter how much you try and lie to yourself that it is otherwise. Number five, with all the backstory bits that led to the main character becoming a boxman, maybe this is a story about how damaging it is to define yourself purely as a sum of your past trauma. That's it, I guess. Um, overall, I didn't like this that much. It was pretty in parts, and I liked about a quarter of it. I like a lot of surrealist, absurdist stuff, but this really wasn't for me at all. So I'm going to give this two stars. So thanks for sticking around for this review of that fairly lame book. Don't forget to follow me on Goodreads. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Like and subscribe for more reviews. They're not always a good thing, I am honest. Stay tuned for the next one, and I'll see you soon. Bye.